In wetland four, we're going to be looking at a mole more thoroughly. So we talked about this concept when we were talking about balancing chemical equations. The mole helps us to move from the very, very small quantities using atoms into larger quantities that we can measure in a lab or using equipment. So because atoms are so small, we need a large number of them, like 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, to move those quantities into measurable values for us. So in this lab, we are going to be looking at the chemical reaction between vinegar and baking soda. And we're going to be doing some calculations in order to find out the concentration of the vinegar that you have. So one of the first things that we need to do, uh, and another thing that I should point out, is that when we have one mole of baking soda, it reacts at when it's complete with one mole of vinegar. So in order to convert from the baking soda that we can measure into the vinegar that we're trying to find, we're going to have to remember that one mole of the baking soda produces or reacts with one mole of the vinegar. So this is a pretty handy reaction because um, we get carbon dioxide as a product and the carbon dioxide we can see bubble and we can hear it fizz. So once this reaction is complete, no more baking or no more um, carbon dioxide is going to be produced. So as soon as we see it stop fizzing and hear it stop fizzing, we know that we can stop our chemical reaction. Okay, so in order to do this chemical reaction, we do need to make sure that we have our goggles and we put them on. So I'm gonna put them on. We are going to place a clean container on the balance and we're going to tear it or zero it. And then we want to add about 0.5 grams of baking soda. So you can use your baking soda and a, a spoon in order to add about 0.5 grams into our container. Now, as you're adding it, if any of it gets onto the sides of the container, we do want to make sure that we rinse that um, baking soda down into the container so it can react with the vinegar. Once we have an amount, and you don't have to have exactly 0.5, but you do want to record the mass accurately. Okay. So you want to record your mass, and then we can move our balance out of the way. We are also going to need about 25 milliliters of vinegar. So we're gonna take our vinegar and we want to read the volume, we're going to add it, and then the exact amount is not essential, we want around 25 milliliters, but we do need to make sure that you read it accurately. Okay, so put it down, look at it eye level, make sure you're reading the volume off that graduated cylinder to the correct number of decimal points. Now at this point, you may need, depending on the eyedropper you have, you may need to transfer that vinegar into another container to easily use your eyedropper and add it to the vinegar that you've measured out. Okay. And then we are going to slowly add the vinegar drop by drop, making sure that we rinse down the sides and we're going to add it until we stop seeing any fizzing. We're going to add it slowly um, because 
Once that reaction stops, if we add too much more vinegar, our measurement is not going to be very accurate. And so we're going to continue to add it until you no longer see any fizzing or hear any fizzing occurring. Okay. Once you've reached that point, our reaction is going to be complete. Um, any vinegar that's left in your eyedropper that you haven't used, you want to um, make sure that you add it back into the volume. If you did transfer the vinegar into a separate container, pour it back into your graduated cylinder and read the volume accurately again. The amount, the difference in the amount, okay, in order to get that reaction to occur is going to be the amount you added to your baking soda. Okay, and you do want to make sure that you're careful that you do not spill the vinegar. Okay. okay, once you have done that and you've recorded the amount from the graduated cylinder, so there is a collection sheet for you. You want to make sure you write down the mass of your baking soda. You write down the volume of the vinegar before the reaction and after the reaction. And then most of the rest of these lines are calculations that you're going to do. So you're going to use the molar mass where we add up the mass of each of the atoms in order to find the mass of the, vinegar, of the baking soda. Okay, And we can calculate the moles from that. We use our balanced chemical reaction to convert between moles of baking soda to moles of vinegar. We're going to find the volume that we used by subtracting the amount we started with from what was left and convert that to liters and then find our molarity. So molarity is a concentration unit that we are going to talk more about and that is moles divided by liters. Okay, so once we know the moles of vinegar and we know the liters of vinegar that it took to, that we added, we can calculate what our molarity is and find the average. Okay, you also want to make sure that you feel your container to see if it is warm or cold so you can decide if it is endothermic or exothermic. Once you have the first trial completed, you can clean up um, your container. The waste can get poured down the sink with water. The vinegar, um, that can also go down the sink with water if you have extra. You're going to repeat the same thing that you did that I just showed you. You're going to repeat that entire procedure a second time to make sure that the molarity that we find and the measurements that we're making um, are reproducible and then find the, we'll find the average of the two. There are some questions for you to consider about this experiment as well. If you at any point have any questions, please don't be afraid to reach out and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have.